from Springfield, Illinois, it's the Major League Combat Finals on ESPN3. A five-on-five elimination tournament team deathmatch featuring the most deadly men to ever yield a club. Three clubs each, 30 clubs in total, 10 combatants, five methods of combat. They're putting it all on the line for the 2011 championships, and you're about to see it happen in front of your eyes, live. These are the two remaining teams who have survived the quarter and semifinals. The best natural selection has to offer. The most evolved, deadly, predatorially superior teams, and they are about to lock horns against each other for the first time right now. This is Major League Combat! Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to Major League Combat. I'm Mike Wimmacher, and joining me is Jason Garfield. Major League Combat, I dare say, requires more coordination and dexterity than any other sport. Each player, of which there are 10 in total, must control the juggling of three clubs each while trying to destroy the juggling of the opposing force. There are five different gameplay formats, and we'll introduce you to each of them as we make our way through the tournament. Right now, it's down to uh, Team K8 versus Team Duncan. We're gonna start with aggregated five on five, and aggregated five on five starts with three members per team active in the combat arena. The additional players become activated when their team takes out a player from the opposing force and continue to do so until all members of a team have been taken out. And right now, we see the player's introductions. You can tell on uh, Team Duncan, they really do appreciate a good entrance. They've got this choreograph, they're, uh, they're pumping themselves up. And uh, we're gonna see some amazing and combat here. Now most people watch this don't even know what combat is. And uh, combat for a long time was really just a free-for-all, a uh, bunch of jugglers just getting together and juggling three clubs and attacking each other and seeing who the last man standing is. But as you can see here, we've got teams going up against each other. We have five unique gameplay formats. Like you said, we're starting with aggregated five on five. Matthew Weiss. Both teams Head referee getting the first game started, aggregated five on five. Now again, we start with three on three. If one team takes out a member of the opposing force, one of their team members gets in, and then you've got four on two. That is the biggest thing in what you look at for in this aggregated five on five combat. It's getting that first elimination because if you can get on the board first, also it becomes four on two and you can do a much better job of hemming the competitor into an area in the combat arena where you can kind of double team him. So. Bransel right now as we see Spicola now running out towards Thompson. Kind of a feeling out process right now as Showers looking to make a move. It'll definitely get more aggressive as, as these rounds progress, but right now, like you said, they are just feeling kind of feeling each other out, trying to get a Showers and Levy there. And Levy now is eliminated, so that means Rentmeester will come in now four on two. So now Bransel and Spicola will have to do some work here and make a more aggressive play to try to get one of their players back. Big oh, move there by that. Spicola. Nice. Still staying alive. Oh, Showers now, taking him out. Showers has taken. See, that was Ant Antonello taken out. Now Bransel gets eliminated by Rentmeester, and Team Duncan scores the first points here in Major League Combat. Aggregated five on five, they win that first round. Now they got kind of a feel of what they're up against, and now we're going to see some strategy for them. Now they know how to attack, who to attack, and uh, they're starting to develop that. Duncan, ready? And you can see how important. Now Carney comes in. And Spicola will take a seat. And now, right away, Team Duncan already getting a point. They get very aggressive. Carney gets taken out there by Adnello. Oh, look at and that. now Bransel tries to come back, but Bransel eliminates himself as well. And just like that, now Yang is in. Now we have four on one here. <laughs> this is not going to last long. Not going to last long for poor oh. Yang. Although he's staying alive, he's really going to make some type of. Oh, now it's five on one. And <laughs> yeah. Ying is finally brought down by Horton there. Ying was trying to stay around as long as he could right there, but when he gets to that point where it's five on one, so you just got to hope that someone Boy, drops it so you get a club, uh, you get a member of your team back on. Yeah, definitely. So as you can tell right now, Team K8 really struggling to find some strategies. They continue to move the first three guys in and out. Now Red watch Beaster Carney now. there. Carney is violent. Now Spicola and Showers. Now Red Meester as we get guys coming in and out fast and furious here. And once again now, five on, five on one, Carney is left. Now Rentmeister like gets you eliminated said, right there. Takes himself out. So Spicola comes in now. So Joey Spicola in to help out. Now he's going to try to move on Sayers. They get close to us here at the broadcast booth. Spicola is still trying to stay alive. He is now eliminated. So Rentmeister comes back in. Carney trying to take out Antonello, and in doing so, lost his clubs. Now Ying comes into the... 
Combat Arena. Once again, finding himself yeah. the <laughs> last man standing. Yeah, Brendan Ying is not having a good night of it whatsoever. He's been forced into uh, some various precarious situations so far here in the aggregated five on five. And finally, he tries to hold out as long as he can, but he is eliminated by Antonello. And once again, Team Duncan scores the point there. So Team Duncan on a roll early on. You can tell they got it firing on all cylinders here. And Team K8 is just trying to find an answer here. They have not been able to get the numbers on their side at all yet. And that's been the biggest difference so far in this match is the fact that they've been down early and often as Rentmeester drops. So, and now Horton's gone. So now quickly, now it's five on one. So now, wow, look at uh, Showers knocked it away. Here. Yeah, so back we go. Look at the comeback here by Ray Duncan. Moore We're back in. to three on three, it looks like here. And uh, Take it that'll out do Ying it. Early. Ying and, and Carney, and that's, yep. and that's a limit. Oh, there's one left here. It's it's Levy. So Levy now will be in the position that Ying was in. Don't underestimate Levy, though. Yeah, I've we, seen him we, uh, take out four at a time before. Tried to take out Rentmeester there. Look at him, look at him go. Look at these look at these amazing catches he's making as he works his way down the field. Now Rentmeester was eliminated, so now Bransel can come in. And if they're not paying attention, Bransel th takes out to Antonello right there. But and that brings those, in Carney. Look at those high throws. He's just making his way around, and he can get that throw Sayers back. Sayers is now eliminated, so now it's Showers and Horton are the only ones left on Team Duncan. Nice oh, move nice. there by Carney. Wow. Knocked that one out of the uh, combat arena. And now for the first time, K8 can go really on the offensive there. But look at Horton and eliminating people left and right. But he finally dropped a club. But he still was able to get another one of his players back onto the combat arena. So Horton went a little kamikaze and was able to prolong this match here. And now Sayers comes out, Rentmeester. Levy's still out there with Carney. Now you see a feeling out process, a little one-on-one. -on -one. Sayers drops, but Levy drops as well. Now Brantle comes in, Rentmeester drops. So now we have four on two, it looks like. And that's really where it should encourage you to and control your do club. It. Because if you take yourself out in the process yes. of it, it's, it's really like you didn't do anything at all. You just exchange players. It's a sum of zero. So K8 gets on the board that time around. Point, Team K8. And it's a little bit of a replay see that here. final move there. Uh, so now Spicola, Levy, and Bransel. Quickly. Oh, Levy tried to take out someone. Yang comes in for the first time. He has a, a teammate on, on the combat arena with him. Four on two right now. Bransel makes a move on Rentmeester, but eliminates himself in the process. Something you just talked about, Jason, when you're going for those type of eliminations. And now Ying drops. And um, Ying had an opportunity to uh, steal a club, but didn't see it. And uh, don't underestimate Ying. I mean, he may be one of the smaller ones there, but he really has good uh, club control. And when he swings at you, don't be nearby. It looks like that wraps up the aggregated five on five. We'll have to look for the final score here to Our see. Final score is one point, Team K8. K8 got one. Three points, Team Duncan. So Team Duncan, team Duncan wins aggregated five on five. So Team Duncan wins the aggregated five on five. They win it three to one. Our next event is As we sumo. move on to the sumo combat, which is more of a one on one variety. Sumo combat is played in one five-minute round. Players line up and go against each other in one-on-one -on -one battle inside a 12-foot diameter circle. Players may choose to attack through standard combat means or use their bodies to push the opposing players outside of the circle. The player to either drop one of their clubs or get both feet knocked out of the circle loses. The losing player must go to the back of the line as the winning player stays in, earning a point for their team. The team with the highest score at the end of the five-minute round wins sumo combat. Team K, are you ready? Spicola and Antonello here to start out. Spicola, a very aggressive player, and he drops the club, so he gets eliminated there. No point. No point. Both of them were out of the circle there. Now showers against Bransel. Bransel knocks it away, and he is going to get a point there for K8. Bransel has a little bit of an advantage here with his height. He's able to kind of knock away those higher throws, but look at Horton go right at him. Nice move there by Horton, taking out Bransel. If it happens to work out, I'd like to see Bransel up against Brent Easter yes. because then we'll see a battle of the Giants. Now Horton just drops one there, so an easy win there for Levy. Now Levy versus Rentmeester. Rentmeester obviously has a size, but he drops it there, so Levy on a roll here right now. See if Doug Sayers, ooh, Doug Sayers trying to throw a little razzle-dazzle, and he caught, Le caught Levy staring at the tricks he was pulling off there. <laughs> so Sayers incorporating some freestyle action into Major League Combat. He takes out Ying there. Now Carney wants him to back up a bit here. You say Carney's a very aggressive player, so we'll see if he can put to the end oh, of the rain of terror, yeah. but a Took nice move there by him. 
Now Sayers on a roll here. Sayers and Spicola both eliminate themselves there, but at least Sayers gets out of the circle there now for uh, K8 because he was wreaking havoc there against K8. So Team Duncan now. Brant's a little upset there by head referee Matthew Wise's decision he right there. that call later on. Go to the replay. Levy against Antonello here. Oh, nice oh, move there by swings. Jack Levy. It's, it's just amazing how nobody has gotten hurt yet. You exactly. can see how fast they're swinging these clubs at each other. Levy's, Levy and Showers now. As you can see them trying to continue, as long as you keep one foot in now, as Showers tried to push out Levy, but he's able to keep his center of balance and stay in the circle. So K8 doing quite well here so far in sumo. And just as I say that, Horton takes out Levy. Now Ying will step in against Horton. Horton very aggressive, makes a really quick first move. He doesn't allow he you to- out of the way quick. Yeah, Ying, now he's gonna get knocked away. The one thing I noticed about Horton though, he doesn't allow the opposition to really get into a groove as far as their juggling pattern. Now he's just kind of playing a little cat and mouse here with Carney. So they go back and forth. Though, you don't see it coming. No yeah. They both knock each other out there, so no points scored in that round. Spicola now against Rentmeester. If Rentmeester can get the win, but Spicola with a nice move right there, aggressive against Rentmeester. Now say, oh wow. Oh, Spicola was out of the circle. There's a good move there by Spicola as Doug Sayers tried a little razzle dazzle. Bransel knocks it out of the hands quickly. Big move there by Bransel against Antonello. Now against Showers here, pushing back and forth, and both guys are eliminated. Sometimes I think when you throw it too high like that, you know you're going to get eliminated. Your best bet is to try to push the other guy out to get a push and no points awarded in that push round. Push him out and at the same time try to steal one of their clubs so you're still in. Right. Now Horton trying to make a move on Ying. He's a hard one to get. Exactly. But Ying but steps out of bounds. Yeah. Ying is very slippery and crafty there. Just when you think he got him out, he finds a way to keep it going. Carney and Horton now. They call Carney out of bounds right there, so. Team Duncan trying to make a little bit of a comeback here. Spicola against Horton, two very aggressive players. You see Spicola go quickly for the strike to try to get the point there. Peripheral vision oh. used there by Spicola. Taking oh, a swing. He got him on the second time around as Spicola. Now Spicola against Rentmeester. And Spicola once again going for a quick strike there. Rentmeester trying to use his oh, arm size. Tangle and, uh, and back and forth they go. A little bit of a box out there by Rentmeester. That's a lot of guy to try to get around there for Spicola. He knew not to keep on tugging on his arm. Branson eliminating Sayers. Scoring fast and furious here in sumo combat. <laughs> Bad throw way in the back of the line. But Antonello could not corral it in, so no point scored there. Oh, going for a shove. Levy oh, against Showers. Now we got a tangle. And that's going to be a double elimination as well. Starting to get heated here, Jason. Yeah, these, I'm a little worried about teams. a dislocated shoulder or something if those arm tangles We still have persist. three more disciplines to go through. And now Horton's got it. You, good job there. Horton used both his club and his body to get that elimination that time against Levy. Now Horton barely there. He was just right on the edge that time around. Almost eliminated himself there. But, but Horton very aggressive. He gets that high throw. Him and Carney right now, two very aggressive players going at it. As you can see, once they make that high throw and make that move to try to eliminate the competitor, now he, oh, and he the drops The technique it. involved yes. in some of these attacks, it's not just swinging your clubs at people. There's body movements involved. There's well, fake outs. And look at there. Spicola once again oh, takes out Remy. So that's what I was going to mention. When they throw that club high and they make that move, then all of a sudden you got to try to find where your club's at. And sometimes that's even more no difficult than the elimination is trying to keep a hold of your own club. It's a combination of juggling skill and combat. You know, it's... Uh, being able to catch really or throw accurately and, and make sure you catch it at the right time. And in such a close attention. space in the sumo, that was a nice elimination there by Antonello. And that will do it. That's so, time. And that's the time there, as you can see. A little relaxing to have that over now, as long as I can catch my breath. So we'll have to see what the final score is. Back and forth, K8 took a quick early lead, but did they get enough Our points early is. on? Did Team Duncan end up coming back? 11 and points. 11 for K8. 13 points. 13, 13 for, Duncan. for Duncan. So Duncan comes Duncan back Sumo after a quick run by K8. Duncan is able to come back and get the victory. As you can see, the comeback here by Team Duncan. They they were behind early on in this competition, but were able to, once Sayers got in there and threw a couple razzle-dazzle tricks, that kind of righted the ship for Team Duncan. They were able to win this one. 13-11. So we're going to go to break. When we come back, it will be Breach. You don't want to miss that.
The 2011 Major League Combat Finals on ESPN3, brought to you by the WJFstore.com, for the very best instructional DVDs and equipment for juggling. Duncan Toys, visit them online at www.yo-yo.com for all your skill toy needs. And K8 Juggling, maker of the world's finest glow juggling equipment. Welcome back to the 2011 Major League Combat Finals live from Springfield, Illinois. We're now moving on to Breach. Breach has played in one 10 minute round. The offensive team will attempt to protect the designated player as he tries to make it past the opposing team and into the Breach zone. Teams switch offensive positions after every score and should the defensive team take out the runner before he reaches the Breach zone, they will switch to the offensive position at the yard line where the takedown occurred. The most scores in the 10 minute round wins Breach. Only the runner needs to be taken out to end the round, and they're playing on a 20-yard field here in the combat arena. So the coin toss was won by Team Duncan. They elected to go on offense first. This is going to be somewhat similar to football as far as the 20-yard field. The dash in the middle will be basically the 10-yard line. It serves as the 50-yard line, and a lot of strategy involved in this. Thursday night when we were watching K-8 against Team Sparta, I noticed they sent Spicola down very quickly and used Bransel kind of to be the last line of defense. So Spicola goes down really quickly. And now Thompson just kind of trying to find his hole. It's almost like a running back trying to find a hole and explode through it. Yeah. And now Carney's coming around. Bransell there, there as well. And now he's going to make a move. Knocked away there by Bransell. And almost right in here into the broadcast booth. So good defense there by Bransell as he's able to take out Thompson before he crosses the breach zone. So now they'll flip it over and Carney will take over as the runner. And now Team Duncan goes on to the defensive end. So they're able to get deep into K-8 territory, but unable to score. Now Carney behind the line. As you can see, if they drop a club, they are eliminated. So Bransell trying to knock away. Now Carney trying to go down the right sideline. He'll come back into the middle of the field. Spicola is deep behind everyone, trying to sneak up and take out Horton. Now there's a little bit oh, of a... As he get through and gets blocked in. Oh, he's going blocked. forward again. Now he's got a wide open there lane there as Rentmeester and Showers both drop their clubs. And he gets on the board. So a breach down for K-8. You can see the strategy involved in a breach. You have to just wait and wait and kind of pick your spots. And Carney did just that. He evaded the defense for the longest amount of time he could. And then once he saw the opening, exploded into the breach zone to score a point for K-8. And now Team Duncan will take over on offense. Once again, look for Spicola to quickly get down the field. And that's exactly what he does. Bransell stays back deep as the last oh, line of defense. Oh. Attacking and trying to get in there at the same time. So Spicola eliminates himself. And now Rentmeester is also eliminated. Now Carney coming from behind to go right at Thompson here. Thompson quickly on the fly had to adjust to Carney. And now he's able to get by Carney, but Carney's still closing in on him. He's going down the left sideline is Thompson. Now Ying drops his club. So Thompson's got some maneuvers, but Carney comes from behind and knocks out of bounds. So once again, good defense there by Team K8. Four yard line. They will get the possession back, trying to put more points on the board. Now, we saw in sumo that with K-8, they got the points early, but weren't able to uh, get the victory in sumo. Will they be able to get the victory here in breach? That is the question. Now, Carney will be their runner once again. This time, Bransell throws one rafter blaster deep towards the uh, height of the ceiling, but he is eliminated. And now Le Levy Carney takes going out for it, showers. Going and Carney, side. once again, now he's going to be double teamed here. Can he get to it? Knocked oh, away at the last second by road. Horton. And he goes down in the back of the breach zone there. No points awarded on that one. But you got to credit Carney. He saw an opening. He threw it, tried to run underneath it and make that catch to complete the point. But Horton was back there as the last line of defense and took it away from him. Now, once again, Thompson will be the runner for Team Duncan. Showers try to make a move. Now, Horton. Getting more aggressive now as Team Duncan. Now, Rent Meester and Horton are the only two Carney guys left. Carney coming up behind Thompson. And Thompson's going to have to readjust. And now Carney knocks it away. So Carney throwing his body all over the field, both on offense and defense. So he takes out, once again, a big stop there by Carney. Looking at the replay here real quick. Carney not afraid to hurt himself. <laughs> Willing to give it up to try to stop the opposition. Now, as you can see, K-8 gets a little bit of a luxury starting at midfield after that big stop. Now Carney's going to go for it, trying to get to the breach zone, and he does. He Good blocking in. there by Spicola. Spicola, Joey Spicola, almost a fullback there, took out uh, Horton, played linebacker, and Carney gets into the breach zone again. So another score for Team K-8. But a little bit of the younger, quicker legs underneath K-8 showing in this one. They definitely have an age advantage. They're lighter, they're faster. Once again, Spicola immediately 
predictably his, at this point. <laughs> exactly. You would think they would develop a strategy against that. Now Bransell's going to move up quicker than he normally does. Now he hangs back a little bit as we see a lot of chaos. Now Thompson's got a free reign down. He's got Ying to beat, oh, and he and does. He's in. Nice move there by Thompson as he just kind of waited and waited, picked his spot, and exploded down the Boy, right sideline and got into the breach zone there. Ying was the last line of defense, but unable to stop Thompson that time around. So now 2-1, Duncan gets on the board there. Carney once again going to be the runner. you got to think Carney may start to get winded here with the amount. And once again, Spicola right down the middle of the combat arena. He takes out Rentmeester, but then drops his own club. So now we got three for Team Duncan. We got three blockers for Carney, who's just buying his time right now. Levy with elimination of Sayers. Now Ying is eliminated. So now Bransel and Carney. Well, no, Levi's still in the game. Levy's still in the game, I should say. Now Horton eliminated. So Thompson, the only line of defense. Oh, he tries to make a big open. move and an easy run to the breach zone for Carney. Carney is a very patient runner, I've noticed, Jason. He, he waits till he's absolutely sure that he's got an opening before he really explodes towards the breach zone there. It's interesting to see that because he is one of the more aggressive players as well, but at the same time, he knows when to be patient, wait for his moment to strike, and then when he does, as you see, just a beeline right to that breach zone. A little change up in strategy there. Spicola stops at the half yard line. Now no one finds Thompson, and he's able to sneak in. So Thompson's able to score. Right. Team Duncan. As we see a couple of clubs fly Team our way. Bransell and Carney both lost their clubs near the broadcast booth here. So that time around, Thompson didn't waste much time at all. He saw an opening and he exploded down the sideline there. And they kind of lost track of him. They almost looked like Team K8 was more concerned about eliminating his blockers rather than getting to the runner. And sometimes that happens. You spend more time trying to eliminate the other team so they don't have enough blockers out there. The next thing you know, you're hemmed up against it. Now Carney with a nice move and he's going to have a wide open line. And we were just there talking about how you're more caught up in trying to eliminate the opposition so they don't have as many blockers in front of the runner. And the next thing you know, the runner explodes down the sideline and Carney scores that time around. And there were at least two members of Team yes. Duncan in their zone there and he managed to get out. And because they were here, there was a clear path to the and, breach zone. And a lot of times too, you see some of the distraction by some of the blockers down at the other end. They're, they're one, yes, they're trying to eliminate the opposition to get less people on the Thus uh, oh, it's Thompson. Good play there by Bransell. What I was trying to say was a lot of times, yes, you're trying to eliminate the opposition, but at the same token, just your mere presence in that area means the opposition has to focus on you and not on the runner, and that allows the runner that split second to get into the breach zone. Uh, that may be their strategy, in fact. I mean, that's a good one. Um, I've not heard of that being done before. I mean, they're developing strategy as this uh, plays out here. This is a fairly new game for all of them. So now we'll quickly move there by Antonello. Once again, Carney is able to squeeze in. by. Oh, this is a difficult one. He's weaving in he's and weaving out. In and out. The There's side, Sayers back. drop. Now it's just up to Horton now. So now Horton's going to drop back all the way to the breach zone and really try to play defense. He's going to try to eliminate as many of K8 and bring them to him as he can. Now he makes a move up the middle. Uh, Unsuccessful, and Carney gets an easy score. Down. So Horton tried for a while there to kind of cat and mouse play a little rope and dope, get in the back of the breach zone and try to take out. Going to the replay here, as you can see, as Horton is trying to play a little rope and dope there in the end zone, then he tried to explode through and eliminate as many people as he can. That gives the opportunity for Carney to get an easy run to the breach zone and score a point there for K8. Now once again, Spicola. Now he's going to drop back. So early on in this match, and he's eliminated there by Antonello. Early on in the match, Spicola was going for all the way, and now he's kind of stopped at uh, midfield the past couple times. Now Bransell takes a double swing at Thompson. Unsuccessful. Now Thompson down the edge here. Now cuts back, and he is knocked away from behind by Carney, oh. who runs into the barricade once again. Carney sacrificing his body for the benefit of his team. Huge failure. And here's... Here's the replay. Thompson looks like he has a clear path to the breach zone. And look at the closing speed of Carney and a dive at the last second right at the line to knock it away from Thompson. And he goes barreling into the barricade. So it looks like we have a penalty against Carney there. Referee Matthew Wise said he got a little over anxious there in the elimination. So quickly right at the goal line. Was it a score for Thompson? Did he get in? So Team Duncan gets the Team point Duncan there. So Carney, while he made a great play there, he was eliminated and now is sitting down for a minute here. 
after he was. Uh, he hit that uh, dasher board pretty hard. Uh, and the referee, Matthew Wise, called a penalty right there. And now we have a 30 seconds left for Carney to be timeout. So now they're kind of up against it as Team K8 because of the uh, physical play of Carney there. He was accrued a one minute penalty and that's why they were able to get the ball back at the goal line. So now Spicola, a very aggressive player in his own right, trying to make a little cut back there. And he is eliminated by Thompson. So now Thompson is gonna come back for Team Duncan at the seven yard line. So not only did Carney's foul put them up against it and the fact that it was right at the goal line for Team Duncan to score a point, now he's still having to sit out, so they are undermanned at this point. So they're really going to have a lot of work to do to try to eliminate Thompson right here as the numbers are starting to add up. And now Carney is back into the game, and Thompson is eliminated there as Carney's time in the penalty box elapsed. So he exploded onto the field trying to make up for the point he gave to Team Duncan. And he was able to do just that as Thompson thought he had a clear run to the breach zone, but Carney coming in off the field took him out. Now Carney is the runner, a little more patient, less, less aggressive. You're, you're really just on the defense at that point while on the offense. You're just trying to stay away from everybody. So now Carney's got uh, Levy with him and Ying as well. So now he's got two men trying to take out Horton so he can kind of be patient and kind of weave back and forth till he sees his opening and let Ying and Levy really take Horton's attention so that Carney can get into the breach zone. So once again, a little rope a here by Horton. He's gonna try to take out Ying. And that could have been the opening for Levy right there to take him out, and now he just drops it. So now Carney just has to make sure he focuses and makes the catch into the breach zone for K8 to get the point. Try to get a little fancy there to Carney at the end of it, but he already firmly planted himself in the breach zone, and that is the time. It was a back and forth match, Jason, and early on it was all K8. Team Duncan had a couple uh, breach zone scores of their own right, but I think K8 may have had enough to win the this score one. Is six points, Team K8. So K8 gets six. Three points. Three team points Duncan. for Team Duncan. So K8 wins breach. Three. Six to three. So the younger, quicker, and the uh, Carney throwing his body all over the place comes into the benefit of Team K8 as they were able to get the victory. 6-3 final score for K8 in a breach. We will be taking another quick break, and when we come back, we will have a zombie combat and the 360s in store for you. Welcome back to the 2011 Major League Combat Finals. We're continuing now with zombie combat. Zombie combat starts out as a five-on-five -five death match with a few caveats. Uh, if you lose one club, either by an attack or unforced error, you become a zombie. Now, zombies cannot move their feet under any circumstances, but they can attack any players that come within arm's reach, so they can move their arms. They can also be reactivated if a teammate throws them a club, which zombies can also do. Now, if you lose two clubs, either from an attack, unforced error, or by throwing one of your clubs to another zombie to reactivate them, you become a paralyzed zombie. Paralyzed zombies cannot do anything except receive clubs that come within arm's reach. Lose all three clubs and you're decapitated zombie and you are done. There's no coming back from that. This event is zombie combat. And in this event, you're going to see uh, some more juggling skill implemented into this because uh, zombie reactivations require yes. some serious accuracy, especially when you're trying to reactivate two players at the same time that are separated by different distances and different are you directions. Ready? And that's where uh, Team, Team K8, K8 really has an advantage, I think, over Team Duncan. Team K8, they all live in the same area. They can practice okay. together regularly. Uh, Team Duncan, they're all from different parts of the country, so they don't get to practice together except right for when they come to these events. Spicola right away, I believe, turns. And Brent Meester is now a zombie as well. So Team K8, like you said, Spicola very aggressively going after, and he's now a zombie, as is Antonello down there. He's a paralyzed zombie. Carney, Levy, Ying. And now Bransel has been reactivated by Spicola. And you see there's Doug uh, throwing a club to um, uh, Joe Showers there, trying to formulate some sort of a reactivation attempt, or at least just getting the zombie that can move on Carney. the other side. Carney eliminated, now Ying eliminated as well. Now Ying trying to lean back. As you can see, a lot of strategy involved here. Now Thompson is reactivated. Horton still activated, Spicola and Levy. And now a back and forth between and now a and now it's put fault on Spicola. Yes, there was a uh, fault there on Carney. So now he is officially eliminated. So now Levy and Spicola up against Thompson as well as Horton. Now Bransell is quickly reactivated. 
Now Rentmeester may be looking to go over the top there, possibly. And coming from behind there is Thompson. So now... For Bransall, and uh, in the meantime, we have several zombies in the middle of the field. And, and the, you said that can be strategic as well because now you can push the uh, action to where it's more of an enclosed space because you have the uh, borders on the side here. And you really have to wait for your moment too to reactivate yes. someone and if someone's being guarded. Although, if it's holding up the game, they will get a countdown, so they do have to do something if nothing else can be done. But you see these. Uh, now three you, members of K8 in the middle trying to determine uh, Miss Jack Levy who they reactivate. And now Ying becomes a paralyzed zombie, so all he can do is catch. He cannot throw. And now once again, the, oh, <laughs> Levy almost <laughs> taken out Horton's hand, I think. Footfall. Horton and not complaining though. Footfall against Levy. You can see the pain on Josh's face yeah. there, though. He's uh, well. I actually saw when they were warming up earlier today. Uh, at one point, Horton actually had an ice pack on his face because I think he took an errant swing. So he battled back from that. Now they have Bransell kind of two on one here. Horton gradually getting worn down by uh, having different parts of his body attacked and damaged. He's got so his face and his hand now. Now we've come down to basically one on one. Spicola has two clubs in his hand. Now Bransell is down to a paralyzed zombie. So now they reactivate Ying. So now Spicola just decapitated himself. And now Bransell has become a paralyzed zombie, or excuse me, a regular zombie. Now you see Horton in the middle there. Oh, good oh, deflection nice. there by Bransell. And now they have to, the 10 second countdown had happened. And that's why Bransell had to make that throw to Yang to try to reactivate him. And Team Duncan gets the point. So as you can tell, a lot of strategy involved here. And a lot, like you said, a lot of different disciplines of juggling involved in this as well. Definitely. And you also have to um, just wait for your moment. I mean, it's, uh, you know, there's going to be some fast moments and some slow moments. And you really just have to wait for your opportunity. Kind of like in breach, you have to wait for your opening. You have to sometimes wait for the other team to be distracted to do your reactivation. So we see right there, Spicola once again being overly aggressive. He becomes a zombie, so he can only stand there. He can still attack. Rentmeester going right at Bransel. Look at Bransel made that throw to Spicola while he was getting attacked there, but unfortunately unable to make the catch on the other end. Spicola now Levy eliminates himself. So now Carney still alive. We have a couple of we have a few zombies for K8. Sayers, Thompson, Horton, and Rentmeester all still alive right now. So very difficult here for Carney. Now Spicola has been reanimated, and he made a footfall, so he's going to have to drop a club. So he goes back to zombie status. So Carney once again. Now Bransell makes the catch, throws it up high in the air, rafter blast again, and he's going to be down to zombie status again. Bransell very aggressively. He throws that club high and just runs willy-nilly, trying to take out whoever he can, almost like Tallahassee in Zombieland, trying to take out as many zombies he can with one run for Bransell. He's, uh, he's got a very long reach, too, so he's pretty confident that he can get that club when it comes back down. So you see Bransell had to eliminate himself right there to get it to Levy because the countdown had begun. They were going to be eliminated regardless, so he had to give up himself for the better of the team. Still receive clubs. And now Horton trying to take out Levy. Now Thompson going to come at Levy. Levy makes a high throw, trying to cut down the middle. Wow, good control there by Jack Levy. All the way to the other end, and he took out Horton, but Horton reanimated by Rentmeester, now becomes a paralyzed zombie. Now the, now the countdown, and now Carney can't make the catch, and he is going to be down to one club. And they're going to have to just throw it as far as they can oh there. That's Levy. where the skill comes and in. Almost goes, had it. Goes over the head of Carney, so once again, Team Duncan wins that round. And you can see, you can see the uh, physicality of this game as Rentmeester now holding his hands. He got took a shot right there. So you can see sometimes it calls for different measures. This is definitely the most violent combat that has ever existed on the planet. Never has been so much riding on the championship. Never has this been on TV. This really is a new development in the world over the past year. So now Spicola against Sayers. Rentmeester trying to use his height there, trying to get a hold of it. He's oh, got stealing a club <laughs> from Spicola. <laughs> set it, set it. Number 12, Gray, moved your foot. Oh, a quick a, a foot fault there. And now Rentmeester has some uh, words for the head official, Matthew Wise. He's being told to drop a club right now. Not happy about that. Not at all. Now Bransell's going to have three guys closing in on him. If you look, Ying is in an awkward position to try to throw it all the way to and Spicola. Spicola. With his whole back to the field. Exactly. Almost. Now they throw it to Levy, almost like a cutoff man in baseball. Levy keeps his footing. Now he's going to try to get that to Spicola, I believe. 
Brantzel's going to try to draw the attention of his competitors in so that Levy can have a clear path to throw. He can't, so now Brantzel loses a club, gets one right back, but now a paralyzed zombie for a Levy. So Levy, Ying, and Spicola all paralyzed zombies right now. Well, Look at that elimination, and, and he throws it back to Levy. Good catch. There. He, uh, nice there by Brantzel. He was willing to make Look himself he's doing a zombie. It again. He's throwing it behind him so he has time to attack. Passing back and forth. That's a new one. I've not seen that strategy. So now That's Horton, a wise to that act, gets away there. And now Spicola becomes activated by Brantzel. So that was an excellent strategy there by Brantzel. And now they're kind of going around the world as Horton's doing a good job of trying to continue to draw the attention of K8. He was wise to what Branson was doing there, the flip behind the back to Levy, take a quick strike, and then get it back to become reactivated. So now Horton has to watch himself, though. It's hard to see here. Carney's got only one club now, so Carney's going to have to reactivate something. Now Thompson's reactivated, and Sayers takes himself out. Right. So now they're going to throw it to Spicola. Now they have a two-on-one against Spicola there. Spicola makes a move against Thompson. He, he drops the club, so now two. Going to have to make a big throw. Oh, he throws one apiece. attempt. And neither one of them was caught. So once again, oh, Team Duncan. Nope, they're going to say play on. So Carney's got to make a throw to Levy. And there's Ying. He's going to throw to it to Ying. Ying, Ying moves Ying. his feet. Ying yeah, should be so out. That should be a foot foul, but they're going to allow it. So they allow Ying to stay in there. Could have been a foot foul, but no call by the official there. And Rentmeester probably won't be happy about that one. And now Thompson makes a move on Ying, and once again, Ying is uh, able Thompson to stay. Thompson has two clubs. He can reactivate Showers right there. Or he He's can go to Rentmeester if he'd like. He's going to go to Showers. And uh, now Horton. Ying doesn't know. Uh, that showers Rent right behind him. Watch out there. Rentmeester getting in the way. Ying going to make a throw, and he becomes a zombie. He's going to throw over to Levy. to Levy. And Levy oh, makes wow. a catch. Levy is in now. K8 yeah. prolonging this one once again, but that eliminates Ying. So now Levy is left all to his lonesome here. As you can see, Duncan's got Antonello as well as Horton, and they also have Rentmeester out there as a paralyzed zombie. So now using k strategy against them, you see that Showers threw his club back to Rentmeester and went for uh, no Levy with an attack. So now two, we have uh, Showers. Now Rentmeester is officially eliminated. So now it's two on one from here on out. Once an elimination, and that is going to do it because Levy has no one to throw to. Penalty, green player. Out for one minute. Oh, and a penalty on Levy. He's going to be knocked out for a minute he's as well. He's getting bashed up today. Strike to the chest. Out Seems to take minute. it well, but you can tell that he's, he's getting Five. a little frazzled by that. One minute. Yes. <laughs> so Levy Point. eliminated Team there, and he's going to also be sitting out for a minute, which means that Hessness is going to have to come in for this zombie combat here. Nope, they're going to be short. They'll be down a man for yeah, a minute. Yeah, once you have a penalty, you don't get a replacement for that. So we got a replay going on right now. As we can see, the little back and forth that Brantzel had here where he would do the flip behind and go for elimination and then get it right back to become reactivated. Excellent strategy there by Brantzel of K8. Unfortunately, did not pay off for them. So here we go again. Rentmeester going to make a move. Spicola loses the club. Rentmeester moving his way down the field, trying to take out as many as he can at a time, He's continuing his pattern, trying to take out Carney. Unsuccessful. Now Rentmeester becomes a zombie. Now a paralyzed zombie there for, for uh, Antonello. Ying and Brantzel there. Now they reactivate Spicola. Carney's got it going down the middle of the field. Now they kind of, Rentmeester has been officially eliminated. So we got uh, four on four action here, although Ying is a paralyzed zombie at this point. Sometimes, like you said, uh, Jason, now with it, the penalty is over. Now Levy comes in out of nowhere, and he takes out uh, himself. Thompson <laughs> and himself. Got a little over-aggressive right there. Like you said, Jason, sometimes you strategically place your zombies right in the middle of the field, so it really cuts down on the area the other team has to work with. Carney was trying to go for elimination. He was able to kind of take showers with him there. Now Brantzel and Thompson crisscross. All they have are zombies right now for Team All Duncan, right. so they got to make a play here. Four, Four three, three, two, and now they get it, and it's a drop. And All he drops right. both, and now he's paralyzed zombie. Now Horton comes back. He is reactivated. Horton against Brantzel, what it comes down to. Now Spicola is also reactivated at this point as well. So Ying and Levy are both paralyzed zombies. Down there, Brantzel takes out Horton and takes out himself. They're both zombies. Showers so now they for throw, and he it hits the ground. So he's down to one. The only person that has 
You're going to throw it to Thompson. And now that's going to be tried to, wow, Le Levy does knock down one of the clubs. And that's going to do it. I thought for a second there, Levy was going to let those two clubs fly over the top of him. I think he realized if I let that happen, Thompson may become reactivated. So at the last second, Levy knocks it away and picks up the uh, score for Team K8 in that round of zombie combat. Final score. Final score one now. Point. Team K8. K8 got three one. Three points. Three Team points Duncan. for Team Duncan. Team, so Duncan, Team Duncan wins, wins zombie, zombie combat. combat three to one. So I believe the height there and the more physical nature of Team Duncan was what gave them the victory in zombie combat. So that will conclude that one as Team Duncan beats Team K8 three to one in zombie combat. We have one event left and we come back. It will be our final event, 360s combat. So stick around. The 2011 Major League Combat Finals on ESPN3 brought to you by the WJFstore.com for the very best instructional DVDs and equipment for juggling. Duncan Toys. Visit them online at www.yo-yo.com for all your skill toy needs. And K8 Juggling, maker of the world's finest glow juggling equipment. Welcome back to the 2011 Major League Combat Finals live from Springfield, Illinois. Team Duncan and Team K8 have battled their way through aggregated five on five. Sumo Combat, Breach, Zombie Combat, and now it's time for the final event, 360s Combat. A 360s Combat will be played in three one minute one on one rounds. The player's objective is to score more three club, three up 360s than their opponent, but they can also choose to attack if they feel that that'll win them the advantage. So it's kind of like chess boxing, only not at the same time. Right, trying to do something that requires concentration and coordination while being attacked. Exactly. Now, a three club, three up 360 is achieved by throwing all three clubs in the air, completing a full 360 degree turn with your body, and then catching all the clubs and resuming a juggling pattern. Or in this case, you can collect. You don't have to continue juggling. And we uh, made mention of it, Jason, we were watching the semifinals on Thursday. You know, you could just have where two guys stand at the opposite ends doing 360s, but once you maybe have a drop or you don't get one, and all of a sudden you look over and he's spinning around, that's when the attacks really come into right, play. because at that point you don't know how many they got, so then your objective becomes to just slow them down and give yourself an opportunity to catch up without them doing any 360s. And they can use the entire combat arena to this. So a lot of times what you're going to look for is for them to make a quick strike and try to knock the opposition's club as far away as possible, and in that time where they're retrieving their club, that's when you pull off the 360s. Exactly. So Brantzel going to go up against uh, Shower, uh, Antonello, I believe. So they both <laughs> drop the clubs there. Antonello and Brantzel going back and forth in the 360. And Brantzel tried right a there. quick one right there. One right there. Fast ones, yeah. Yeah. And this is where I was talking about before, club control. These are uh, the exact opposite, really low 360s. You get them in as fast as possible in single rotations. Yeah, the higher you throw it, the more opportunity that your uh, competitor can come and knock that away, and you're unable to complete the 360, thus getting no points. So right now, Brantzel threw in that quick one. I'm seeing a and lot more combat than 360s. Yeah, exactly. Time. Right now, they're really trying to feel each other out and really trying to take out the other opponent and find a little bit of extra space to perform a 360 in order to get the point for their team. So far, Brantzel now, he gets a little bit of a breathing room now. It would be interesting to see if Antonello at this point now will start to try to go with his own 360. At least one. Got a couple of them. Even, I don't, I I don't know if Antonello even had one. We'll have to go to the judges there. Brantzel got three for Team K8. Team K8 scored three 360s. So three 360s Team for Duncan Team Duncan K8. Team Duncan scored zero 360s. Zero. So yeah, Antonello did not get any in there. Team K8. So, Brant so Brantzel, with those quick 360s, quick low 360s, okay. was able to get the uh, initial point there for Team K8. Now Hessness will go up against Horton here. Horton just has that look about him. It looks like sometimes he just look, likes to intimidate his opponents. He stares right through him. It looks like he's going to go for the attack real quick there. Hestis, though, gets a little bit of breathing room. Looks like he was able to complete one 360 there. Now Horton thought he had one now. Things going crazy. Now Horton got one right there as Hestis trying to pick up his clubs. And now Hestis is trying to do anything he can to stop Horton from getting check a 360. Check that out. Horton takes him out and almost connects and a 360 to it. Exactly. Nice move there by Horton. Now Hestis gets in one in there. The big, the big. Now he's got time. Two. He could fit it in. He could have got there. two in that time. Well, now Hestis, seeing that Horton was trying to preoccupy with his own 360, now Hestis is trying to <laughs> throw two clubs at once here. 
Hessler's trying to pull out all stops. He just now he's just going strictly for the he's combat. He's a headhunter at this point. Yeah, he pulled one off right there, but Horton's got a big lead there. Horton continually knocking away from him. Poor Hessness. He's falling all over the place. Look at that. Horton, Horton looks like he's doing a freestyle routine at this point, the way he's training 360s together. And that will do it. I think it's a pretty easy to know who won that time around. Hessis could just not get it going, and Horton continually knocking those clubs away. Hessis didn't do much to help his cause, though, as he was going kamikaze. Gene Duncan scored seven. Seven to three. So Horton was a 360 machine that time around. Part of that was Hestis running around trying to grab his clubs majority of the entire combat time. Or just standing in a static position waiting to make a move. <laughs> so now it'll be uh, Levy against Thompson here. 1-1, one, one, we are tied up as far as the overall oh, team. Look, look at, at Thompson, Thompson right, right off away. the bat. So now, Le tangle. so now Levy knows right away he's behind the eight ball. Once again, Thompson, another 360. Now Levy. Thompson with a 720. You get both the <laughs> two 360s in that time. 720 under all Team Duncan clubs. almost toying with Team Kane at this point. Now Levy's going to have to try to work. And now look at Thompson. Thompson won't even let him get one Thompson in. Goes down. Thompson just trying to really almost go for the shutout. But it looks like Levy got one in right there. Now he's got 720 there. By, oh, he couldn't it down, bring it in. Credit for that. Another now, 720. Oh. But Levy gets in the way of that one. These two guys going at it, just trying to one-up. Now Levy does get the 720. And Thompson comes over realizing that that had transpired. And now he's going to try to come back into this match. Thompson with a 360 there. Nice little side swipe. Another 720 attempt on Thompson. And, and he, he gets it in it. there, another two. So now Levy with a 720. The These guys, it's almost like we you. We should uh, rename this the 720's <laughs> combat. It's almost like Lauga Benjaminson has oh, inhabited nice both of these competitors. With the <laughs> spinning we saw that time around. That is exhausting to do that. That was a huge battle between Thompson time. and Levy. Wow. Like I said, it's almost like they were inhabited by the spirit of Logan, Logan Benjamin sitting there with the spinning that transpired that time around. We're trying to talk over the scores right now because of the 720s that were Both thrown teams, right there. Stay on your sides. So we're gonna, trying to get the final score here between Levy and Thompson. That one was one for the ages, I think. There, Jason. That I mean, was, uh, that the, was the most 720s <laughs> I think I ever saw in a 360s competition with, with Combat Incorporated. Three 360s. Team Duncan scored 10 360s. 10 360s. Right, Thompson, Thompson puts it up 10 to Team 3. Duncan wins 360s Combat. Team Duncan wins the Major League Combat Finals. Yes, and Team Duncan, Duncan takes home the 360s and win a sco total score of 4 to 1 as the only one they weren't weren't able to win was the breach combat. Team K8 was able to win the breach, but everything else between Zombie, 360, Sumo, and Aggregated 5-on-5 five five went to Team Duncan as they went overall four events to one. The breach was the only thing that K8 was able to break through, but Thompson, uh, just an impressive display of 360s. And we even saw early in the week, he had a little bit of a shoulder problem. He didn't even know if he's going to be able to go this week. And now uh, for this event, the next thing you know, he powers Team Duncan to the Major League Combat Finals Championship. He had to duck out a few of the uh, short program uh, competitions, but if you're getting hurt anyway, if you're hurt a little bit already, <laughs> it doesn't really matter. You might as well go for it all in the Major League Combat. So this has been Mike Winmacher and Jason Garfield. We thank you all for watching. After seeing these amazing competitors in battle, it's normal to feel compelled to learn how to juggle. So if you find you've been afflicted with this fixation, Go to the WJFstore.com, and there you'll find low-cost solutions for learning how to juggle. Really, the basics are fairly easy. You, can, you should be juggling within a few days after getting the starter kit. I'd like to thank Jason Garfield, thank our crew who brought this to you. This has been a production of the World Juggling Federation in association with ESPN Incorporated.